Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop. If it's your first time here, I'm a woodworking channel, do lots of wood turning and woodworking videos and post every Friday. So if you like what you see, please subscribe so you don't miss out. In tonight's video, what we're going to be doing is wood turning a magic wand. Now this wand's going to be inspired by Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. Uh, it's a really good friend of mine, she's really into those movies. And she's also got some really lovely ragdoll cats. So we're going to try and incorporate those ragdoll cats into the design of the wand, as that would be her Patronus if she ever had one. So hope you enjoy. Before turning, I made a, a model wand. So I've got a little cat carving. It was meant to be at the end with a, with a tail going round, but I think it looks more like a, a raccoon for the head. So we're gonna return a larger ball this time for some detailed carving later on. So we've got a bit of beach between centers. This is an old chair leg. Love using reclaimed wood when I when I can. I'm just gonna set the tool rest to the right height. We're gonna be using a roughing gouge just to rough this out into the round. So when we come to roughing out, we're gonna to wanna to take the corners off, work it into out. Same the other side. We're going to be using this to turn a tenon. Making sure I've got a nice square shoulder there to fit against my jaws. So nice and square, enough to the, the jaws to clamp onto. We're going to take out our driving spur now. Now if this was any longer, I would use some different jaws, but I think we'd just about get away with this. Let's turn them on, see how true he's running. Tiny bit of wobble there. Just going to take that out. Bring the tail stock up for a little bit of support. Gonna use the parting tool just to make sure we haven't got a dimple in the end of our work. Gonna be using a continent and spindle gouge to roll a ball. And see with a nice sharp tool we get shavings like this. So this ball is going to be where we're going to do the carving. It's going to thin this out somewhat. So I'm trying to always cut downhill so the fibres of the wood then are supported. Now a design thing to think about anywhere where it transitions from a thinner piece to a larger piece, it's always a good idea to put in some form of bead or transition point. We're going to be using a skew chisel to help us do that. Use the parting tool to. Now we're going to be gluing in a, a longer piece later on for the, the rest of the handle. It just make that nicely transition into where we're going to be gluing in for the rest of the handle. Now 
using a knife carting tool to cut the end off. So just making a little tenon so we can attach into the next handle piece. So that will get glued in then to a hole we're going to drill in the next handle piece. Just going to part it off with a knife parting tool. So there we go. So that's going to slot into the other part of the handle. In the meantime, we can get working on this cat carving. And to speed things up, I love using traditional carving tools. Where I'm going to use a adrenal and some power carving stuff just to get this done on time. So I've drawn the cat profile out the best I could. And I'm just going to trim away some of the waste, the bits that we aren't going to need on the bandsaw. Now to make this safe, I've used a hot glue gun on the... Uh, this bigot bit that was left over to make it level so it's not going to rock and catch. And I've also, just to be super safe, gone around with some Gorilla Tape. Take this nice and slow. So that's the profile we got from the bandsaw. So I'm going to use a little Drenel type tool with a carbon sort of burr thing on the end. I can put my power respirator on. It's going to get rather dusty, and we're just going to hog away material until it starts to look like a cat, hopefully. <laughs> so that's my uh, best attempt in the time frame for a quick sort of whittled cat face. So we're just going to add some features on now using a pyro pyrography iron. It's like a, a wood burning iron and we're going to come back after we finish. The so just drilled 12 millimeter hole in the end there and that's going to help this fit into the end so it'll glue in place. That's good. So we're just going to turn this into the long length of the wand. So we've got it between centres, going to rough them out again. Going to leave a little bit there. Go with a cellular sanding sealer. So I've gone up, I've sanded this up to 500 grit, which should give us a nice smooth finish. So essentially, what this sanding sealer does, it seals the grain. It's a, I believe, cellulose is a suspended chalk, so it fills up all those end grain bits that are a bit like straws. That allows you to get a nicer finish over the top. So I'm going to cut this back now with the friction of the paper towel. So I've got up to my highest speed. And the next finish we're going to put over the top, I'm going to go for a friction polish. This is like a shellac based friction polish, I believe. Okay, let's buff this up. Nice, lovely finish on that. Happy with that, and that's going to contrast nicely with the back of the handle, which I'm just going to do in a flat wax over the top. So the uh, Good to put together now. So all I gotta do is part off that little bit there, round over the tip, a little bit of sanding, we can get this glued into place. Just to make this project even more special, I've knocked up a, a quick dovetail box, so they're all hand cut, and it had a bit of a twist in the uh, the tulip wood. You can see it's got a lovely pattern though, after I got that twist out with the plane. I didn't make a video on this part because I'm rushed for time, and also there's some amazing dovetail videos on YouTube already and um, what I did is I bought some laser engraving ply from Hobart's and I've just laser etched then some designs I've got her two cats then I've taken a, a vector of a cats and sort of adapted them 
and on the bottom then I've got another sort of laser engraved design just to add to the design and what I'm going to do is after this is glued together trim the box down with uh, my bandsaw and on the inside of the lid then will be a little message for Kira to read when she opens it. So we're going to glue all this up together. I'm all clamped up. I've got some of these um, Stanley clamps. They're brilliant. We had some of those in work. They were so impressed with them. I went up and bought them myself. I've got some um, Aldi or Lidl sort of clamps as well around the outside. So we're going to let that set. So finally completed the box. So cut it and I've chiseled out some hinges. So you can see the, the message on the inside there and the wand itself. So I've cut out a foam insert, lined it with some black material and here's the wand up close. You see the, the cat carve in there into the uh, the tin part of the wand. So it's a pretty cool project, I think, and uh, I hope Kia will really enjoy this. Hope you've enjoyed tonight's project. If you have enjoyed tonight's project, please consider supporting me in subscribing to my channel by hitting the link below, as that really helps me out in getting more videos like this your way. So I hope you have a great night. Dialkenvar, no star.